Um, I, I sent out some questions oh, to... Um, I think we might have done a different one. Stephen Anthony. Oh. You have to play level okay. one. Oh. Level two. Sorry, game two. Okay. Change it to game two. There you go. Um, and he's the maintainer of I Stella for Stella. almost 20 years. Cool. Yeah. And I'm just going to load it on you here. You have to not move when they go through you. Oh, gotcha. And then you have to play too many of these. So let me just transfer over that uh, Q&A. Yes. So Too just shy, hold on for one second. As Tanya plays this, it is a challenging game, especially game two. I can go right, it won't be anything. It'll be question mark, and then they'll, they won't penalize you. And where is... There it is. The interview there. And we've also got, um... Then go left. You're gonna get some time. We've got Steve in the chat. I believe, yeah, he's still there. And he can answer any uh, additional questions you have about Stella. It doesn't matter whichever one's the same. Which one. He says, uh, first of all, I want to credit all the others that have helped on Stella. Uh, see the main contributors list on the Stella webpage. There are too many names to mention here. But I have to single out a few. Without them, Stella wouldn't be where it is okay. today. <laughs> and I probably would have stopped working on the project years ago. The interview mostly oh, so. concentrated on me, but there are many more people that uh, made it all possible. <laughs> uh, Brad Mott, hopefully I pronounce all these names right, uh, the original author of Stella and served as a guide until I took over maintainership in 2005 or so. Uh, Brian Watson, original developer that added the initial debugger support in Stella, which is, in my honest opinion, a real crowning achievement for 2600 emulators. It's so so helpful and let me let you look under the hood of what's going on in these games um especially for developers and tracking what's going on in the ram okay. thomas jench uh too much to mention has worked on all areas of the code and gave many ideas he was originally a z26 user uh, but after many stellar improvements that he suggested we eventually won him over so so much now that he's a member of the stellar team <laughs> Christian okay. Speckner updated the TIA core on, in Stella 5 based on his work uh, in his own project, Stellarator. This is perhaps the largest improvement to Stella over in the past 10 years. He is also a member of the Stella team. Uh, Daryl Spice Jr. helped with uh, development on various bank switching schemes, uh, DPC, DPC+, CDF, BUS, etc. And also made nice improvements to the debugger. Chris Brenner donated Cycle Exact Sound from his 2600 FPGA project. Ah, that's where it came from. Go to the left. With Christian and myself integrated it into Stella 6, which just got released not too long ago. This makes Stella Stellarator the first 2600 emulators with Cycle Exact audio. Um, I asked him, what drew you to the Atari 2600 and keeps you well, interested in it? Doesn't matter. It was the first gaming system I owned. I vividly remember getting it used with its 11 inch black and white television and keystone capers and space invaders which we just recently got the patch for keystone capers uh this must have been around 1983 or so it had it for a few years then moved on to nes then c64 then amiga stuck with the amiga until the mid 90s then moved to pc linux i took several courses in university about virtual machines and emulation when i graduated i became interested in working on such a project Looked around in the late 90s and saw that NES had all kinds of emulators, but the 2600 had one that hadn't really been maintained for a few years. Stella, of course. I looked into it and played it for, with it for a while. <laughs> then I had major illness in 2000 or so where I basically couldn't leave my house for six months. To pass this time, I uh, started working on Stella and submitted my first patch. Uh, still have it, 52k. And the rest is history, I guess. I picked Stella because it was a C++ versus assembly that I was used to in other projects, and because felt it was a simple system, and it would be easy to understand. Oh, Little did I know that I would end up being really the most awesome. complex of all older systems. But that complexity is what keeps it interesting, and you never know what somebody's going to come up with next. I stick with it because it's not done yet. And I know there's a huge list of to-do uh, for, for Stella. Uh, and then I asked, tell us a little bit about the week-to-week -week operations that it's go into terrible. maintaining the Stella code base. At minimum, uh, when I don't get to do any coding, etc., it's still four, uh, about four hours a week answering messages in Atari age, personal mails, talking with developers, going over to GitHub, and thinking about bug reports, etc. During development, it can reach easily reach 15 hours a week or more. 
Sadly, I haven't been able to get much done over the last months or so, real life issues, but I'm hoping to get back into it, uh, to it in a week or so. During crunch time, which is self-imposed since I'm technically not on a schedule, it can involve many hours. I remember working 30 to 40 hours a week on Stella occasionally, and that's with a full-time job. That doesn't happen very often anymore, thankfully. The extra members on the Stella team over the past few years have really helped. Aside from the normal development, I occasionally do some refactoring, essentially repaying some technical debt. Because the project is so old, some of the code comes from a time when the C++ standard wasn't as nice as current versions. So I work on converting old code to C++11, C++14 where appropriate. An interesting aside, every time I sit down and log onto a computer, into a computer, home, work, wherever, the first thing I do is open a terminal window and change to the Stella directory. I do this without thinking almost religiously for the past 15 years. Third question, are you surprised at the continual innovations going on in the Atari 2600 programming community after all these years? For example, I gave him CDFJ, uh, Uno Kart, etc. Surprised at the actual innovations, but not the people that are still working on it. I suspect that many active 2600 developers, both hardware and software, were original users of the 2600. Since it was probably their first introduction to electronic gaming, I suspect it holds a special place in their hearts. At least that's large, a large part of the reason I'm still interested. I always try to get these latest innovations integrated into Stella. See number five about that. So, question four. Can you talk a little bit about the amazing work that went into the Stella code that turned the Retron 77 from a terrible purchase into a great emulation machine? I did a visual of initial work in creating specific version for the R77, release 3.9.4, and that's the one that was on there. It fixed some very glaring bugs, joystick stopped working, and backported CDF to the, that release, allowing to play some of the latest homebrews. But it was still based on the version of Stella that was eight years old, and contained many bugs that have been fixed for ages. So we had to get Stella 5 slash 6 running on this device. But before that could happen, some history as follows. I redesigned Stella over the years in such a way that it is very abstracted. So in approximately 260,000 lines of code, only about 1,000 lines or less are needed for each port. Well, that's pretty good. So the differences between Windows, Mac OS, and Linux ports are most at most 2,000 to 3,000 lines. Incidentally, this is why also why Stella has been bit ported to nearly every platform under the sun. It was designed as cross-platform application from the very beginning, thanks to Brad Mott. So if we can get a new platform to look like one of the big three, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, then perhaps 90% of the work is already done. Credit to credit is where credit is due. Much of the heavy lifting to get Stella 6 even able to run on the R77 is due to Christian Spechner. Um, I believe that's Dirty Harry. Um, Dirty Harry? Is that name? Yeah. Uh, basically, he got the code released from Hyperkin to the point where it was just another Linux system. Once he did that, and that was the bulk of the work, then development for the system is like on any other Linux system. So my work is much easier on from that point. Uh, I can compile and test changes on my local Linux system and then connect to the R77 over SSH and then send the uh, changes directly uh, there directly. Once we got that working, it was time for the finishing touches. Fixing controller, losing settings, uh, overscan, vsync, etc. All these were possible with Stella 6. And in fact, many of them are due to Thomas J. And this is all still a work in progress. Look for a new beta release soon. Awesome. Can you turn the game audio down? It's hard to hear James. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is uh, a lot of noise in this game. A lot of crashing. Either way. Yeah, that should be a better level. Sorry, didn't see that. Uh, number five. How closely do you work with developers in updating this code of Stella to make it work with the cutting edge new homebrews? I guess Stella has become well known at this point, and compatibility with it is considered important to developers. So when a new bank switching scheme comes along, the developers normally seek me out to get it. Is that pizza? Uh, yeah, hold on. Sorry. You can uh, navigate and play. <laughs> I got this. Yeah, man, and don't worry about your answers being too technical. It's really interesting stuff, and it's that's why we're here, man. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for taking the time to answer all of our questions. I mean, this is for every level of people. I mean, a lot of the people watching here are very technical, um, but some some aren't, and they're just, they can watch us play games. Yeah, man. <laughs> and just hear, hear our banter. 
Um, so when a new bank switching scheme comes along, the developers normally seek me out to get it added. I usually don't have to contact them first. In some cases, they provide the specs of their new scheme and I implement it. In other cases, where the scheme is more complex and the developer is still working on it, they often provide the implementation themselves. Daryl Spice Jr. is an example of this. He personally provided much of the code for the CDF and bus schemes and updates for the DPC Plus schemes. I want to integrate every new scheme that comes along. If a new homebrew comes along that doesn't work in Stella, then it's a bug that needs to be fixed. Did you? Uh, question six. Did you think you'd still be maintaining Stella after almost 20 years later? Honestly, absolutely not. My wanted items to add to Stella were done after the first year or two. So I simply stopped when I had everything personally I wanted at that time. I would have been done in 2003 or so, but something always comes up, uh, which, turned it, which turned into major milestones. First was the change from strictly console app to a UI-based one. That was a big change. Then an integrated code base on SDL, so that Windows, Mac, OS, Linux ports are essentially the same thing. Then debugger support, that was a big one. And then TIA video and audio. That's a noisy room. I'll wait. Uh, and with the new bank switching schemes, it keeps going. Yeah, there's just a CDFJ is a brand new one. There's always something left to do. So I guess the time just went by, and now it's almost 20 years later. I've taken large breaks over the years. The longest was approximately nine months away from the project completely. But more recently, particularly in the past three years, I've been pretty much constant. That corresponds with Christian and jo uh, Thomas joining the team and really helping with the workload with new ideas. Motivation plays a big part, of course. I was definitely hired for, for one job based on Stella. Uh, the employer, oh, he was hired for a job based on Stella. The employer specifically said that my Stella history on SourceForge was a contributing factor, and a large part of my early involvement was with building my resume. Uh, feedback from users over the years really helps, and this marathon is a great example. So I'm glad we can contribute to, uh, oh, this is a hard level, Yeah. Uh, contribute to the uh, ongoing push. Um, if I see people are interested in the project, then I will continue with it. That's continued for almost 20 years. So I'm still here. <laughs> what is the future for Stella? Is the seventh question I asked. To make it the best 2600 emulator available, having support for all bank switching schemes, all controller types, etc. Basically, to be to a point where you never need to use real hardware at all. Many people will, of course, myself included. Many people will. Oh yeah, use real hardware like we do here. Um, but I would like to get at a point where uh, if someone doesn't have real hardware, then they won't be disadvantaged. And that's a great point, just to go for a side tangent for a second, that eventually all this hardware will stop working. And you will come to a point where this emulator needs to be perfect. And so you can continue playing this in a hundred years. Um, finishing... Uh, da, da, da. Finishing up all the remaining bug ports and enhancements on GitHub, but honestly that list is growing faster than we can keep up for the immediate future, which is amazing that there's still things being found um, and additions needing to be done. Uh, work on debugger improvements. My background interest is in making developers' lives easier. I don't know how to write a game for the 2600, and if we're being honest, I don't think I have the creativity for it. It's amazing that the guy who maintains the emulator can't write a game for for 2600 but you know that's how it goes that's the gig man yeah. um but if i can help other developers come up with excellent games then i'd like to think i've done my part just like us we're playing games but i mean i could write a game and i do want to write a game but i just don't have the time to write a game at the moment i hope hopefully i will in the future um his other one is improve the retro arc support uh this is still in beta for what i will what will become version 6.1 but I'm getting the latest Stella working in LibRetro uh, will open it up to many people. I think At Games will be using it in their next flashback, but don't quote me on that. That's exciting. Hopefully it has all the bells and whistles, and it's a nice flashback. Uh, integrate Stella more fully into my lectures. I'm a computer science lecturer at our local university. Whenever I teach a course in C++, data structures, etc., I like to include Stella in the discussion. We talk about how concepts are not just dry, 
uh, details but are actually used in mature real world software projects. Students really seem to enjoy that and makes more things more interesting for me too. Finally, just to conclude, uh, ju finally, just to continue working on Stella and hope that it holds people's interests. Eventually, we'll get back to cheap F PGA for 2600. Sim uh, eventually, we'll get to cheap F PGA for 2600 emulation, definitely. But I don't see Stella ever disappearing completely. It'll always be a better option for some use cases, particularly for development. Definitely for development, so you can program on your computer. And why would you need an FPGA in your computer? It's not necessary. Uh, he said, and he concludes, here's to another 20 years, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if I'll still be at it, but I'm going to give it a try. So thank you so much um, for that amazing interview, um, Stephen Anthony.